Apostle Francis Marion Lyman addressed the conference. He considered that there had been an excellent conference. The Spirit of the Lord had been poured out upon the brethren who had spoken. Besides, we have been addressed by epistle by the brethren of the First Presidency. It is necessary to be collected and avoid extremes that might have a bad effect. Troubles that accrue to the Latter-day Saints for righteousness' sake will soon end. As related in the second chapter of Daniel, it was made known to Nebuchadnezzar what would transpire in the latter days. The speaker read the passage relating to the setting up in the latter days of a kingdom, which was to break in pieces and supersede all others. The Lord had begun to establish that work. In order to do so, he had conferred upon man the right to officiate in his name, so that he should be bound to acknowledge their ministrations. It was necessary that men should be informed in regard to God the Father and His Son Jesus Christ. For this reason they revealed themselves to Joseph Smith. Faith, repentance that produces reformation, baptism by immersion for the remission of sins, and the reception of the Holy Ghost, imparted by the imposition of the hands by the authorized servants of God, were doctrines of the gospel. On the base thus formed we go forward in knowledge and obedience unto salvation. Latter-day Saints have no license to do any wrong of any character, but must work righteousness before the Lord. The priesthood has been given, and it is not confined to those who preside in the church, but every good man is entitled to it. Those who are unholy have no claim to that authority. Every woman is entitled to have at her head a man bearing the Melchizedek priesthood. So has every child born into the church a right to have a man thus endowed for a father. Every family should have a head of that character. The heads of families are entitled to be governed by the Spirit of God, and in turn they should, under that influence, preside over those entrusted to their care. The speaker here read the revelation regarding the obligation upon parents to teach their children the doctrines of the gospel, and to see that they are baptized when eight years old, and to teach them to pray and walk uprightly. When these things are not done, the sins of the children are visited upon the parents. This injunction had, in speaker's opinion, been more or less neglected. The priesthood is organized into quorums, and there are presidencies and appointments from the presiding officers of the church downward through all the ramifications of the system. This compact organization enabled all to be taught in relation to their duties. There are also associations in the nature of aids to the priesthood in carrying on the work of advancement and regeneration. But of all others, parents are the most deeply interested in their children. God has provided that Satan has no power to tempt little children, so that they are already redeemed if they die before they reach a condition of personal responsibility. A spirit of opposition is developing all over the world against the Latter-day Saints. Apostates are, in many instances, inclined to disturb the peace of their old friends. But the Saints cannot be robbed of their right to the kingdom of God. Nebuchadnezzar was shown that it would never be given to another people. In this day, prophets and others of God's servants had been slain, but these things have driven us closer together and have made us stronger. All neglect of duty will pass away, and we will draw closer to the Lord. Parents will be more diligent in teaching their children. The saints need to reform and repent of their lack of wisdom, and no longer strew their ways to strangers. No reasonable person will find fault with them for supporting their friends and letting their enemies alone. The world are united in matters in which they are interested. So should the saints be. Those who are engaged in the present crusade are not making efforts against any crimes among us. It is for things that are good we do that we are pursued. A law has been enacted against one of our religious institutions, but it would just be as consistent to make a law to prohibit us from baptizing for the remission of sins, or attending to any other religious ceremony of the church. There is no principle of the gospel that is more sacred to the Latter-day Saints than the marriage covenant. It enables a man to secure the relationship of his family for all eternity. No more important principle has yet been revealed to us. We have no inclination to marry wives from among unbelievers, for this is forbidden. Therefore, who is being infringed upon in this matter? Some sisters have married men outside the church, and this has been a grievous wrong. Such women have placed themselves outside the ordinances of the church. They are united to their partners for time only, they and their children being subjected to separation after death. The saints look to the glorious prospect of a perpetuity of the family order, the people who have gathered here from so many nations have not come together by the preaching of a popular doctrine. Quite the reverse. They necessarily are subjected to persecution. They have taken up the cross of Christ, who suffered as no ordinary man could suffer, and his atonement applies to all men, save the sons of perdition, who cannot be redeemed. There are three general kingdoms, 
degrees, or conditions in eternity, and to reach any of them it is needful that men, either here or hereafter, must repent of their sins. The doctrines of the gospel have been embraced by most independent and resolute people on the earth. They have exhibited an individuality and strength of character that are rare among men. They are not only independent, but they are honest, industrious, and exemplary. They are, were not attracted here by hopes of ease and plenty. They acted on principle, aside from any prospect of material advancement. But God has blessed the land and prospered his people. There has been an international intermixture of races by marriage, the result being that a bold and capable generation is developing. We are a peaceable people and are learning to be self-supporting. We abhor iniquity in every form and excommunicate those who are guilty of corrupt conduct and permanently expel those who commit adultery, declining to allow them to re-enter the church. If the saints had their way, there would not be a house of ill fame in this whole region. We would rather that our children should die than that should be, they should become unvirtuous. The laws regulating our conduct should be strictly observed. If we do not, the Lord will allow trouble to come upon us. But if we are true and pure, we can, with complacency, suffer if need be for righteousness' sake. May the Lord bless Zion and her friends throughout the earth and the righteous everywhere.